What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hardley and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to download and set up Quest Trade IQ Edge. That is the software that I use in all of my videos and examples. It's also the software that I use on a daily basis for my day trading, swing trading and long term investing. So in this video I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know. Let's go. Okay, so the number one question I get all the time is where can you download the software from? And the answer is that it's kind of difficult to find on the website, but I will post a link to this exact webpage in the description to this video so that you can come here very easily, you can find it super easily, and this is the download and install IQ Edge webpage. Here you can see that you can download it for your PC as well as your Mac, so you can use it for either type of computer. And all you have to do is click on this download IQ Edge button right here. It will download the software to your computer. It will give you a brand new desktop icon. All you have to do is click on that icon, sign in with your username and password, and you will be right into the software, ready to go. And I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know to set that up. But first, if you don't have an account yet and you wanna get started with Quest Trade, use the link in the description to this video because it will give you $50 in free trading commissions, meaning that your first like five or 10 trades, you won't pay a single cent and you can try out the platform completely free, risk-free, and you can save 50 bucks. So I promise you, it'll be well worth your time to use that link. But once you've got it set up and you're ready to go, this is what the Quest Trade IQ Edge software is gonna look like. Now, as you can see, it's a pretty blank and boring screen here. This is kind of the homepage that we're gonna build out. I'm gonna show you how I do it personally, and then you can sort of customize it to what suits your kind of trading and investing style best. So here we've got the blank screen, and then at the top we've got a bunch of different buttons here, and they're gonna show us a bunch of cool different windows that are gonna pop up. So first, we're gonna open the order entry window, and we are also going to click on the stock chart window. And so now, as you can see, I've got a stock chart open here. I'm going to expand this a little bit and I've also got my order entry window where I can place an order. You can see I've got my quantity, my order, my stop, my duration, the route and the account that I want to trade with. And so what's nice about this is now I've got an order window and I've got a chart window. The problem here is that they're not linked up. So for instance, when I change my order to Microsoft, it's gonna change the order window to MSFT and it's gonna give me the last price here, but it's not gonna change the stock chart. So in order to set that up and in order to link these two together, we're gonna to click on this little paper clip right here and we're gonna choose the color green. Now, as you can see, the, each window is gonna have this little paper clip and when I click the paper clip here and I link it to green, it is going to automatically change the chart to match the order window and that is really, really nice because if we are changing between, let's call it Microsoft and Amazon and then we go to Tesla and then we're ready to take a trade on Tesla, we want this order window to be ready to go with the exact same stock so that all I have to do is enter in my information, click on buy or sell and we're ready to go. So that's the first thing you need to be aware of is basically this kind of drop down menu here. All of these different colors can link up to different things. When they're not linked up, the prices will not change or the charts will not change. So you need to make sure that they're the same color. And now when I change this to blue, it goes to Apple. So you got lots of different options here and you can also link up different things, which is really nice. Now, one thing that I know a lot of day traders have is multiple monitors. So for instance, if you wanna take this stock chart here and you wanna put it on a different monitor, it doesn't really go anywhere. It just kinda of slides off the screen here and it doesn't move to another monitor. But if you wanna move it to another screen or another monitor, all you have to do is click on this little arrow button in the top right, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna put a green border around your stock chart, and then it's gonna allow you to move it off the chart or off of the Quest Trade platform and into another window. So wherever you wanna put it, once it is highlighted green like this, now you can move it to a different window. Same thing with our order entry window. If you wanna put this onto a different monitor or a different screen, all you have to do is click on this little button right here that says float. It will float the window basically off of the software and then you can move it to whatever monitor you want. That's the idea there. Okay, now once we've got our price chart here, there's probably a couple of different things that you're gonna wanna do to it. So for instance, as of right now, we have our price chart on uh, in candlesticks right here and we've got our volume, but the volume is all just one color. It doesn't really tell us um, a whole lot here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this and I am going up to edit studies. And once we're in edit studies, I'm gonna click on the lines here and I'm gonna click on match tick. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna match our volume to the color of the candle. And that way it'll basically just show us whether or not the price is going down on those trends. So that's the first thing that I like to do. Now, if you like to use indicators like the MACD or the RSI, 
It's really easy to add those in. You're gonna click on the studies up here. You're gonna to go to trend indicators and then you're gonna click on MACD with histogram. If you wanna add the RSI, it's gonna be the exact same thing. Relative strength index, basically under the same category. And as you can see, we now have our volume, our, R our MACD and our RSI all directly underneath the chart. Now, let's say you wanted to do some, uh, some price analysis here and you wanted to put a trend line on here. You can go to drawings, click on trend line, and you can sort of form your trend just like this. You just click and release and hold it. And it's really nice. You can also do a price line. So let's say we've got some resistance right here. And this is interesting. So what I've done is I have extended my price lines to the right. So you're just gonna right click on the price line there and you're gonna click on edit price line and it's gonna open up a new window for you right here. And then all you're gonna do is click on extend the price line to the right. You can do it to the left as well. I do it to the right. And that way, when I basically form a price line here or I establish a level of supplier resistance, it will extend that line all the way to the right indefinitely so that as the price continues, that line is gonna stay there, which is really, really nice. So those are the first couple of things that you need to know about the price chart. Now, if you wanna add in a moving average, for instance, you're gonna to go to studies, you're gonna to go to trend indicators, and you're just gonna to go to moving average. Now, it is going to start and it's gonna default with a 20-day simple moving average, but if you wanna edit that, you're gonna right click on it, you're going to click on edit studies, it's gonna open up a new window right here. You're gonna click on your moving average, and then you can have all of these different inputs. So if you want the input to be on the close of the price, you can do that. If you want it to be a simple moving average, an exponential moving average, or a weighted moving average, you can do all three of those options right here. I usually go with the exponential moving average, and then I usually do a 20, 50, and 200 day moving average. So I usually put three of them on, but you can do whatever you like. This is just a good way to adjust some of the metrics within that moving average. You can also do the exact same thing with the MACD or the RSI. You can adjust all of the different parameters right here in the edit study section that you can get to by right clicking on the study. Okay, now the next thing you need to know about is the watch list. So when you click on this button right here in the top, it's gonna to bring down this kind of watch list um, window. And what's nice about this is it kind of gives you a market view with the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, but you do need to link this up to your chart. So in order to see these, you need to basically color them the same color as your chart and then you can go through and you can take a look at how they're doing. Now, this is on a one minute chart at the moment. We're gonna zoom out to a six month chart. And as you can see, I have a little bit of technical analysis from some of my other charts going right now. Um, if you ever get this point where the map is scrolling or the price chart is scrolling on you, it can be the most annoying thing in the world and I really hate it. It took me a little while to figure out this, but what's happening is it's basically trying to help you draw a line because I still have it set to horizontal lines right now. And so if you click on drawings and you go to pointer and you just click on this, it's not gonna move over anymore, which is really, really nice. Now here in the watch list section, this is really important here because they kind of give you this market view watch list, which is great, but you wanna create your own watch list. And so you click on this plus button right here and then to create your new watch list or create your own watch list, you can click on this button here that says new watch list and then it'll pop up with a new little window. You can name it Zach's watch list two. You can name it whatever you want and then you can start to add in different stocks here. So AAPL, NBDA, you can add in whatever company you want and create your own watch list. Then once you have your watch list set up and you wanna come back to it another day, you click on the plus button here and you go to personal. This is gonna show all of the other watch lists that you have ever created. And for me, for instance, I have a watch list for quantum computing and the four stocks that I am watching. And so here are all of the stocks in my quantum computing watch list. And now I can sort through them really quickly. I can take a look at all of them to see what's happening in literally a matter of 30 seconds. And I can also see what the change is, what the bid and the ask is. I can see what the volume and average volume is I can see all of my metrics right here and the price chart right here and it's all linked up so it's nice and easy to use now the next thing that you need to take a look at is the stock screener especially if you're gonna day trade and you really want to try and find some new trading ideas here is a stock screener that you can use and this is really interesting because when you click on the plus button right here it's gonna give you a bunch of features so that you can kind of filter through what you are looking for if you're looking for a small cap or a mid cap if you're looking for two times average volume, if you're looking for a breakout play, depending on what kind of trader you are, you can usually find it by going through the scanner in here
here. I personally like to use my watch list rather than a scanner, but I know a lot of people like to do this. So here is a scanner that is built into Quest Trade. I also have a link down below for Trade Ideas, which is another really great scanner. It is paid, it's a little bit better than Quest Trade, but if you're gonna use a scanner to day trade, that is the one that I would recommend. The link is down below. And the last thing that I wanna show you here before we wrap up this video is this little section down here on the bottom left. This is where you can see all of my different tabs. And these are basically different layouts of charts and orders. And let's say I have level two and let's say I wanna put charts on all my different screens. I can create different tabs down here that are basically workspaces with different layouts. And so as soon as I have a layout that I like, what I would do is I would right click on it, I would click on duplicate the workspace, and now it's gonna give me an exact copy of this layout so that if I make some changes or I accidentally delete something or I get rid of my settings or I even close the page accidentally, I will always have a backup that is ready to go and this is super, super important because once you put in the work to build your dashboard and put into all these settings, you really don't wanna lose that and you wanna make sure that you can keep that and go back to it whenever you want. So that is kind of your crash course on Quest Trade, your crash course on how to get started with Quest Trade IQ Edge. If you wanna learn more about it, definitely check out the videos on my channel. I also have a completely free stock market fundamentals course that will walk you through everything you need to know to get started trading and investing. It is 10 hours long, it's hosted on Skillshare. There's over 11,000 students that have gone through the course and I promise you it'll be the best free resource that you can find online. You get a one month completely free subscription when you use the link down below to sign up. If you cancel within one month, it's completely free. They won't charge you anything. You just got the entire course without paying a single cent promise you it'll be a well worth your time, well worth your efforts, and it will definitely teach you something new. If you got any value out of this video though, remember to click that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Good luck trading, good luck investing, and we'll talk to you soon.